Hey guys, today I'm here with the K&N Black Hawk cold air intake fitting all 2018 and newer JL Wranglers with the 3.6 liter V6. So if you're in search of some performance gain for your Wrangler while also getting an upgraded and stealthy look underneath your hood, this option by K&N is going to be a perfect choice to take a look into. So whenever you're opening up airflow, whether that be intake or exhaust on your Wrangler's motor, it is going to increase your horsepower, your torque, as well as your efficiency as far as your fuel economy economy goes. Now this option by k &N is going to give you a dyno tested 10 horsepower increase as well as 10 foot pounds of torque increase. However, I would like to mention that those are going to be in the higher RPM ranges. And as us Jeep owners, we don't spend a lot of time out there. However, you can expect to feel a little bit of throttle response when you are getting on the highway or you're giving your Jeep a little bit of gas and you are in those higher RPM ranges. With that upgrade in airflow, giving you that upgrade in performance, you're also getting some better filtration with this system with the large conical filter. It is going to be oiled for those of you out there who are looking to uh, maintenance this over time and keep this for the life of your Wrangler. Not to mention, this is overall gonna give you a better look than the factory plastics with the black powder coat aluminum intake tube and the black filter, giving you that stealthy look that I was talking about before. Now, I would like to mention that this is going to be an open box design and that's really for somebody who's sticking to a drier climate and isn't concerned about water getting inside their engine bay. Now if you are in a wetter climate you're doing some mudding or water forging with your Wrangler and you are concerned about that filter I would recommend to take a look at some closed box choices for cold air intakes or even some snorkel options. However if you're looking to get that performance and if you're not concerned about water getting underneath your hood then this is going to be a good choice. I would also like to mention that this is not going to be carb certified. So if you do live in an emission restrictive state, I would keep that in mind when shopping around for a cold air intake. Now with all of that being said, this is going to be roughly $300. And I personally think that that is a really good price point for what you're getting out of this setup. Now $300 for a cold air intake is pretty average. However, some less expensive choices are usually going to have more or less a no frill design. They're going to be a little bit more basic and comparison to this option. Now when we take a look at more expensive choices, those are usually just gonna have those extra add-ons, including those closed box designs and extra features that are a little bit more protective to the filter itself. I personally think that this stands out, especially with the all black design. You're not really gonna see something like this out there on the cold air intake page. So this is not only gonna be unique and give you that upgraded look, but it's also giving you a really good upgrade in performance as far as a cold air intake goes. Not to mention it is going to be incredibly easy to install at a one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. You're gonna need some very basic hand tools to get this thing on. So speaking of the install, let's jump into that now. The tools that I used for my install were an impact wrench, a trim removal tool, a flathead screwdriver, a 10 millimeter and eight millimeter deep socket, a 13 millimeter and a 10 millimeter shallow socket, a T30 and a T20 torque socket, and a four millimeter Allen socket. Our first step is gonna to be to remove our ambient air temperature sensor as well as our Craig case tube. So you are gonna need a trim removal tool for the wiring harness here, but you won't need any other tools just yet. First, we're gonna remove our ambient air temperature sensor. This is just a small wiring harness that's attached to the sensor itself. We'll take out the sensor itself once we get our intake off, but all we have to do right now is just to press this tab and pull back. And then we can remove the harness from this resonator over here. I'm gonna use a trim removal tool. There's two clips that are attached here. Just wanna make sure that they're out of the way so we're not gonna damage the harness. And there's also another clip that's attached to the back. This just popped off very easily, but you may need a trim removal tool for that. Now we can move over to the crankcase tube. With this, you're not gonna need any tools. There's a little tab here. Then we're just going to pull straight back. We can tuck this out of the way and move on to our clamps. Our next step is to loosen up the clamp on our throttle body here. We don't necessarily need to take the clamp or loosen up the clamp on the air box and the intake tube, just the one at the throttle body. I'm gonna use a eight millimeter socket and my impact wrench. Once that's loosened up, we can move to our mounting bolts. 
There's going to be three mounting bolts. There's going to be two at the front on the radiator support or the radiator fan here. I'm going to remove those with a 10 millimeter socket. And then there's going to be one on the air box as well. Once all of that is removed, we can wiggle out our intake. So I'm just gonna pull this part of the tube off our throttle body. We can lift up. This air box is held in with a couple of grommets, so we can just pull this out as one piece. On the JL, we also have a Ram air tube. So what we're gonna do is remove that as well to clear some room for our new intake. We do have to remove our grill. It's gonna consist of a couple of clips. So I'm gonna use that same trim removal tool and remove those clips that are holding in the top of our grill. So once those are removed, what we can do is lift up on the top of the grill. There are a couple of pins holding it in. You don't wanna break those. And then once you kind of have it loose like this, we just have to pull back on this bottom part. There's gonna be some retainer clips down at the bottom, so you can just give it a good tug. We can just put the grill aside for a second. Now that we have our grill removed, we do have to remove this support bar here because we have to access the two bolts behind it. I'm gonna use a T30 torque socket to remove the two bolts that are holding on this bar. Once we have our support bar out of the way, we need to remove these two Torx bolts with a T20 Torx socket or a Torx bit so we can remove our intake tube that's behind our grill here. Once those are taken out, so we can pull back on this that's just held in with a grommet at the bottom. Wiggle that out and put that aside. Before we start putting together our new intake, we are gonna put this bar back on because the new intake will not need the intake tube down at the bottom here. After the bolts are threaded in, I'm gonna use that T30 socket, torque socket, and tighten those up. There is a little tab down at the bottom here that has to go in a fitting down here. So we won't need the grill off either in order to install our new intake, so we're gonna reinstall this by lining up the clips at the bottom moving the pins over the top of the grill, giving it a good push. And then we can reinstall those six clips up the top. Once that last clip is in, we can head over to the table and assemble our intake. So the only thing that we really have to swap over from our factory intake onto our new intake tube is that ambient air temperature sensor. I have a flat head here. There's gonna be a little tab with a step that holds it on. I am just going to raise the tab above the step, turn it counterclockwise, and you can pull back. It might be a little bit difficult at first just because there is an O-ring in there, but it should come out pretty easily. Now onto our new intake tube, you'll see that it's down at the bottom here, or should I say the top. You will be provided with a little grommet that we can put into place. That's gonna hold that temperature sensor with the O-ring. Feed the grommet in, it'll sit on either side. Then we can feed this through. You just give it a good twist. You wanna make sure that this tab sits flat. So that is gonna be it for our intake tube. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of our intake together. And for the bottom pegs, we will need to swap over the grommets, but we can do that in just a second. What we can do now is start assembling the heat shield. We are going to attach our filter adapter, the coupler for that, our studs for the bottom, as well as our seal for around our heat shield. So we're gonna start with the filter adapter. There's two threaded holes on the filter adapter. We're gonna put it on the inside of our heat shield here. There are gonna be two uh, drilled holes in the heat shield. We're gonna line those up. And then we're going to take our button head hardware with a lock washer and flat washer and thread those in. Once those are hand threaded, we can take a four millimeter Allen key or Allen socket. I'm gonna be using an Allen socket in my impact wrench and just snug those up.
Once those are attached, what we can do is take our coupler with the step as well as our smaller clamp and we can fit that over the filter adapter and snug that up. We don't have to tighten it down just yet, but I'm gonna snug it up with an eight millimeter socket. Next, we can attach our studs at the bottom. You're gonna see two holes at the bottom of your heat shield. These are going to attach here. We're going to attach the grommet here so the actual heat shield stays in place when it's in the Jeep. You're gonna take your larger provided bolts, the lock washer and the flat washer. These are the 13 millimeter bolts. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the filter adapter and just thread those in from the other side. Do the same thing with the other one. And then we can tighten that up with the 13 millimeter socket. What we can do now is line our heat shield with this seal. This is gonna make sure that all of that hot engine bay air is going to stay out of the heat shield. We're gonna start at the bottom and line the whole thing. Now that we have our K&N intake most of the way together, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about this K&N intake and the benefits that you're gonna get out of this, especially over your factory system. Now, starting off with the filter housing design on your factory system, this is gonna have a closed off air box. That's gonna provide a lot of protection to that filter inside, making sure that nothing really gets in and to that filter, but it is going to be pretty restrictive as far as the inlet air goes. So you're not getting a whole ton of airflow as far as that inlet goes into that filter. Now moving over to this option by K&N, it's going to be the exact opposite. We're not getting as much protective qualities out of this. Uh, it is going to be pretty open, but it is going to allow a lot more airflow in and this will even seal to the hood to make sure that all of that hot engine bay air stays away from that filter. Now I would recommend this to somebody in a drier climate considering that the filter is a little bit more exposed. However, this is going to help out your performance with all of that extra airflow. Moving over to the filter, this is going to come with a large conical filter that's going to increase filtration while getting, a, getting rid of a lot of that restriction. Not to mention this is going to be reusable. You can clean this, you can re-oil this, and it's essentially going to last the lifetime of your Wrangler. In comparison to the factory one, that's going to have a paper filter or a paper element. You are gonna to have to replace that after so many thousand miles. You aren't able to clean that, you aren't able to reuse that. They are pretty cheap, but they also are pretty restrictive as well as not the best as far as filtration goes. Perfect for the stock application, but as far as performance goes, something like this is going to be a lot better. Now moving over to our intake tube. This this option by K&N is going to have an aluminum intake tube. It's going to have a nice black powder coat finish to go along with the stealthy look that this whole black series has, and it's going to be a straight through style. This is also going to be a little bit larger than our factory intake tube, and it's not going to come with any of the restrictive qualities or additives that this uh, factory one does. As you can tell, there are some resonators on here. The mounting points also have a small air pocket up front, so that is going to cause some restriction. And the intake tube itself is actually kind of flattened out. So that's also gonna cause some restriction and moving over to something like this, this is going to be, again, that straight through style. It's going to send that air directly through your filter to your throttle body, increasing that performance when mounting this new K&N option up. Not to mention, it's going to look a lot better than the factory plastics. It's going to give you an upgraded and more stealthy look underneath your hood and really complement everything else going on inside your engine bay. So enough about these two side by side. Let's go ahead and finish up our new K&N option. Before we pop our grommets on and put our heat shield into place, we are gonna remove this bolt right here. This is going to be a mounting location for our heat shield. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket in my impact wrench. Just 
just gonna go ahead and remove that. So these grommets are on the bottom of your factory intake tube studs. All you have to do is slide them back, pull them uh, back and they will pop off. We're just gonna pop these into place on our new studs. And then we can put this down into place. As you can tell, there's three mounting holes. The two on the outside, those are gonna be where these two studs mount. We just gotta give the heat shield a little pressure. Should sit into place. What we can do now is reattach the side of our heat shield to this mounting location. We are provided with a bolt, a lock washer, and a flat washer, as well as a spacer. The bolt is just going to accommodate for that extra length in the spacer. Then we can tighten that down with a 10 millimeter socket. Next, we can attach our filter by grabbing our clamp and sliding it over our filter adapter. We can tighten that up with an eight millimeter socket. Then we can move to the outside. Now we can grab one of our larger clamps, slip that over our coupler here. Slide our intake tube into place. And then move over to our throttle body. We're gonna have to put that coupler on before we can line everything up and tighten everything down. So we're just gonna slide this over our throttle body. Slide one of our clamps over the throttle body. Slide our second clamp on. And then we can put our intake tube in and start to kind of line everything up. So now that everything's most of the way lined up, we can tighten everything down with that eight millimeter socket. Last but not least, we can plug in our ambient air temperature sensor, put that into place and take our crankcase hose and snap that onto our new intake tube. Then we're all set to go. That's gonna wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe and for more videos and products like this, always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.